Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're back with an update on the HD Home Run DVR software. And you're gonna notice I've got an NVIDIA Shield TV here sitting on the desk because this software is now running on the Shield. Not only is it a client software to play back live recorded television, but this can now record live TV also. So we've got everything running here out of one box. And not only can it record all that TV, it can also push it out to clients on your network like this little Raspberry Pi here uh, running Kodi. So we're gonna look at all of this and see how it all works in a minute. Now, if you're not familiar with an HD Home Run, uh, it's a series of hardware devices that take live television either off your cable system with a cable card or through an over-the-air antenna and it puts it out on your computer network and when it's on your network you can use devices like this uh, to record stuff and play it back or just watch live television. We've done a ton of content on this in the past so you can check out my playlist linked above and down below in the video description to see how I'm using it but I've been a big fan of these products for a long time because they were able to allow me to get all of my cable company equipment that I was paying a lot of money to rent out of the house so this thing has saved me money and it's worked out quite well. However I have uh, in the past uh, been a uh, spokesperson for Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run products, because they had me uh, work on their Kickstarter. However, I have been a customer of theirs uh, much longer than they've been a client of mine. It's a product that I really uh, like and very passionate about because it's really a cool way to kind of roll your own network DVR system in your house, and they really do uh, work quite well. But I did want to disclose that up front. I should also mention that the NVIDIA Shield TV that we have here was uh, furnished by NVIDIA also. However, I've bought uh, another one in the past as well. So we've got two great things that I like quite a bit, and now they're uh, working together. I should also add that uh, Silicon Dust is going to review this video prior to posting just to make sure I got everything accurately uh, depicted because this is a work in progress and I don't want to make promises for things that may or may not come down the road. So I just want to make sure I've got everything accurate so nobody gets disappointed. But uh, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own as we move forward. All right, so let's take a look and see how all of this is working now. So we do have the client here running on the shield. In the background, it's also running the recording engine, which is what it uses to make all the recordings onto the shield itself. So uh, all that stuff is running internally now on this one device. Now, if you are doing other things with your shield, like playing some higher end Android games and other things, uh, you might not want that recording engine running in the background, taking up system resources. I've found it's uh, behaving quite well, but again, you know, if you're recording two or three things at once, that might bog it down a little bit, especially if you have a game that's very demanding. So the recording engine can be run on other devices too, like a Synology, NAS drive, a WD MyCloud, other brands of NAS drives are supported. You can run it on a computer computer to and then just run the client on here so you can take that recording functionality and put it to a different device and again just use the NVIDIA Shield as your client. So you do have a lot of flexibility as to how you want all of this to work. Uh, they do recommend though only having one device in your home network running the recording engine because uh, it actually goes out to their server to get its uh, list of tasks to do. So uh, you definitely want to uh, make sure there's only one device running otherwise you're going to be duplicating everything in your network and using up tuners on your HD home run devices. Uh, you can use multiple HD home run tuners with it. So I have a, a single three tuner device hooked up right now, but I could get another one and it'll very smartly uh, balance out the load to uh, use the a number of tuners it needs to get the job done. So it's very smart in how it works and all uh, pretty much plug and play. So let's take a look at the menu here. And uh, this is the recorded section here. This is all the stuff that I have currently recorded on my Shield TV. It sorts it out by show. On the top here are all recordings done in the order in which they were made. Uh, down below is stuff in alphabetical order. I can go on to one of my uh, recordings here, for example, South Park, and see uh, all the episodes that I have recorded for South Park if I want. And if you have movies or sporting events recorded here, you'll see that they also delineate those separately so you can get to those a little bit faster when you first boot up your recorded section here. If I want to play something back, I can go up here maybe to the news hour and just select that recording and it will uh, start playing back pretty quickly. Again, this is coming off the hard drive, but if I had that recording engine on a different device, it would play over my network and would spin up uh, just as nicely there. So very flexible in how it works. And again, you can uh, record on here or record somewhere else and it will function just the same. Uh, and we'll go over now and take a look at the discover section. This is how you find things to record. Now they don't have a traditional channel guide on here. And the reason is, is that uh, believe it or not, the channel guide is patented and it would raise the cost of the software for everybody if they had a traditional channel guide. So what they've done uh, is something a little bit different, which I think actually kind of works. So you have a little thing that comes up right off the bat that shows you what's on TV right now. They kind of put a uh, priority on news and other stuff, but you can kind of scroll through and see what's on television at the moment. And they have some additional organizational categories here as well. So we can go over here to movies, for example, and you'll get uh, all of the movies that are about to be broadcast on something that you can actually record. This is all coming off of your uh, local listings with the official movie posters. 
Uh, you can also sort things out with uh, different sporting events too. So for example, I could uh, record a Major League Baseball game if I wanted to. And if I, for example, select this Yankees game here, I'll have the option to record every Yankees game from here on out uh, that appears on my program listings. Uh, you can also do a search too. So if I wanted to, for example, just maybe look for uh, one of the Jimmies on the late night TV here, I can just type in Jimmy and uh, go over to uh, go here and it should give me uh, Jimmy Kimmel and Jimmy Fallon. So I've got uh, right now uh, Jimmy Kimmel set to record. I can delete the task though uh, and go back in here, maybe just record an individual episode if I wanted to do that. Uh, so you have some flexibility now. And this is all stuff that's been on other DVRs. This uh, ability to record individual episodes is relatively new to their beta, but uh, over time, the simple features sometimes are harder to implement than the harder ones. Uh, so they're adding features all the time to this as they're developing their uh, software here in the beta, and it's really been working pretty great. So you can now uh, select individual things to record, or of course you can do the entire series. Uh, you can go back out here to the task section and see um, what is uh, set to record in the future here. So I've got a couple of things that are coming up. I can adjust those tasks individually and uh, kind of jump around in there. So they're making some progress on it. It doesn't do everything everyone's going to want out of a DVR just yet, uh, but it's getting there. Uh, you also have the ability to play back live television too. So I'm going to just uh, pan out here for a second. I'll click on live and now I've got uh, my live TV. And of course they don't have a traditional channel guide here either due to the same issues that the recording uh, engine has. So uh, you can kind of scroll through and see what's coming up next on each channel if you want to do that. That. If you do want to get a traditional channel guide experience on the Android TV platform, they have something called Live Channels, uh, which does work with the HD Home Run. So you can click on that and you will get a traditional channel guide that you can browse through for live television. So you do have that option if you want uh, to get a channel guide. You just can't set up recordings just yet from the live channels functionality. But if you just want to see what's on TV to watch things live, uh, this will work the same way. And that's what's so cool about these HD home run devices is that they're very open. Uh, so whatever works with them will just work. And uh, just because you have a DVR running doesn't mean you can't use another piece of software like this live channels thing to uh, connect to it and watch things as well. And what's cool is that the Android client uh, works on more than just uh, NVIDIA Shield TV. So I'm going to switch over to my little uh, gaming device here. This is an Android gaming device from GPD and I've got the client running on here too. So I can go in and play back things that I recorded just like I did on the Shield. Uh, this is coming now over my Wi-Fi and it seems to be working pretty well. So I can uh, use this as a client to watch stuff if I want. Uh, what's really cool though is I can use this also to set up the Shield to record other stuff too. So if I go over to our Discover tab here and uh, maybe I'll select uh, one of the active news broadcasts that are on right now and I just go down to one of the episodes coming up that I might want to record separately and just I hit the uh, record button there. You can see that it set that up to record. And now if I go back to my uh, Shield TV here and go over to our task list, uh, you'll see that uh, the task we just set up on uh, our little device here is now set to record on the main device. So the Shield is really acting as a server and no matter which client I'm connecting to it on my local network, I'm able to get those recordings set up. And that, I think it's really cool that it's really uh, starting to kind of gel together to the point where you can have your little handheld device on the network uh, running the same client software as what you have on your TV. Uh, you know, anything you do on one device will kind of mirror on the other and uh, they're making some really good progress there. It's not fully there yet. It's still all beta and everything, but uh, a lot has been uh, done here to really get Get this working to the point where it's getting very close to almost replacing my Windows Media Center in the house. But uh, Android clients are not the only thing that you can use. Uh, they have a client that runs in Kodi and that means you can run it on a Raspberry Pi like uh, this one I have here. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 and we're going to boot this up now. The one thing you're going to need to do on your Raspberry Pi is uh, download the Open Elect distribution which is a very optimized version of Kodi. You just install it onto your little memory card and your Raspberry Pi will boot right up into it. You also want to get the MPEG to decoding license. It's about $3 on the uh, Raspberry Pi store and uh, that will allow you to play back the video more efficiently. You do need to get that client or that license installed on here to make the client work. So that is uh, just a little prerequisite, a couple bucks and you're ready to go. But these are really cheap little cable boxes. So let's see how it works as one. All right, so we've got Kodi booted up using Open Elec on our Raspberry Pi right here. I'm just going to go ahead and load up the HD Home Run add-on, which you can find in their add-on repository in Kodi. Uh, what it does automatically is it goes out on your network. It finds all of your active devices. Uh, what I have it doing right now is defaulting to live television. So we're streaming live TV uh, as we were able to do before with Kodi. Uh, what's cool now is because I have the DVR option running here, I can hit the space bar on my keyboard and actually pause the live recording and then resume it again. So if you have a keyboard connected to your Android device, it will also work that way. I'm sure they're going to work on integrating that into the remote, but uh, for now you do need a keyboard to hit the space bar to do that. 
Now, if I hit the escape key on my keyboard right now, I'm going to be brought over to the DVR functionality. And this might look very familiar because this is exactly what we saw, at least as far as recorded programs are concerned, on the Android side. And that's because uh, this is connecting to this and taking in all of the content that uh, this currently has stored on it. So I can go ahead and watch our episode of the News Hour again if I wanted to do that. Uh, there it goes. It's up and running. And that is now streaming over the network right now versus playing uh, from the local disk. So this is now serving the media over our network back over to our Raspberry Pi here next to us. So uh, working very well there. Again, we've got that uh, codec installed, that $3 codec to allow this MPEG-2 content uh, to play back smoothly. So I can stop that. I can also uh, go over to the Discover tab here. And again, this is functioning just like it does on the other device. I can go over to uh, this news program, for example, and maybe set up a recording for the morning. Uh, just hit Enter there, and that will set up a, a recording task on the HD Home Run, uh, HD Home Run software running on uh, the uh, NVIDIA Shields. So if I go back to our uh, NVIDIA Shield here and uh, back out of our tasks, let's go back to Discover and maybe switch back over to tasks, uh, you'll see now that the uh, early start here is now set to record because uh, we implemented that uh, on our uh, little Raspberry Pi here. So again, it works a lot like the other clients do and you have a lot of functionality with it. And it's really been pretty cool to see how all this has been developing, especially because you can use a $35 uh, little computer to be your cable box, which is a really nice thing, especially as uh, this software gets more developed and more mature and gets closer to Windows Media Center. You're really gonna have a lot of options for playing back this content throughout your home. And that's really the, been the vision of this software software from the get-go. Now it's going to support in the near future uh, DRM protected content but only on the official Silicon Dust client. There are restrictions that the industry, not Silicon Dust, but the cable television industry has put on uh, some channels recording. So namely like HBO and Showtime, you'll be able to play that content back on an official Silicon Dust client, but you won't be able to do it on the add-ons for Kodi uh, because of the nature of the open source software that the industry doesn't like. So they do uh, have some comfort with Silicon Dust doing it on their client, but not on Kodi. Even though you're using a Silicon Dust add-on, it's still running it with Kodi and they don't like that. So unfortunately, uh, DRM content will not work with Kodi, but it will work uh, with the official Android client. But I am very excited about how all this is coming along. It's really cool now to uh, have these as options now for little cable boxes throughout your house. I do think for me, I'm going to install the record engine on one of my Synology NAS devices versus having everything run on the Shield just because I you know, play some games and other stuff on my Shield and I just kind of want to keep it clear of that. But uh, the Shield is really becoming my go-to device because it will be my client for uh, DVR recording in the very near future. I play back all my Blu-rays on it. I play a lot of games on it, both from my PC streaming from the other, from the other room. Uh, I'm also using it for retro gaming as well. So this is really becoming like the quintessential living room device. And uh, it is awesome just to see how all of this is coming together. So uh, it's not done yet. It's still got some work ahead of it, but I think it's to the point where I may actually start using this alongside my Windows Media Center and see if we're just about ready to uh, turn off that computer in the other room and let my uh, NAS devices handle all of the recordings. So that's where things are at at the moment. Uh, lots more to come, I'm sure, as we uh, see further developments, and I'll certainly be covering them on the channel. So stay tuned. Much more to come. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll do some follow-up videos in the near future. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.